strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the well service. If you would at this time, find the attendance pads at the end of your aisles and pass those down and make sure you're signed in. And if you would stand and sing with us, our first song this morning is This Is Amazing Grace. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. 
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. will come forward for a few moments. Everybody go ahead and sit. And the children can come up for a few minutes. Good morning, good morning, good morning. There's some more coming. Good morning, everybody. Turn her off. Um, what holiday is this week? It's okay. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. What do we do on Thanksgiving? Uh, what do we do? Go ahead, Natalie. What do we do? Be thankful for our family and friends and the people who love you. I promise I did not tell her what to say. What? And turkey. Eat turkey. That was the answer I was really looking for. And what? And ham. And ham. For those who don't like turkey. Why don't you scoot over this way? Since everybody's... Okay. Lyndon, you're good. All right. So, um, so Natalie already said it. On Thanksgiving, we're, we are thankful, right? We are thankful for a lot of things. I want you to think in your head for a minute. Think. Think of one thing you're thankful for, and on the count of three, we're all going to say it together. Adults, too. On the count of three, we're all going to say something we're thankful for. One, two, three. Family. family. Awesome. I heard a lot of family. I heard Jesus, and I heard love and food. There are lots of things we're thankful for. So in this month, we've been talking about praying so, do we pray when we're thankful? Yeah. Yes. Do we pray when we are angry? No. Yes. Do you know? We pray whenever we're upset. We pray whenever we are upset about something. We can pray when we're upset and mad. Sometimes I have to pray to God to, to calm down. I'll say, dear God, please calm me down. And you know what? It usually works. What? Do we pray when we are sad? Yeah. yeah. Do we pray when we are worried? Yeah. Yes. We pray when we're lonely. Yeah. And we pray when we're happy, right? Yeah. So basically, we pray anytime we want, right? Yeah. We pray all the time. We can pray and talk to Jesus anytime. Caleb, Natalie, pay attention. <laughs> so, I don't care. <laughs> they, were, they were both pointing fingers at each other, and I said, I don't care. Okay, so we pray all the time. We can pray to God any time we feel like it. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. So on Thursday, I want you guys to pray and give thanks to God for all the things yeah, not this week. This week you're eating turkey. All right. Talk to your sister. She's got it down. 
No school for a whole week. I know. All right, so let's pray, and when you pray on Thursday, make sure you pray for what you're thankful for, okay? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for our church. Help us to pray anytime we need to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Freeze. Okay, we're trying something new. You all don't go downstairs yet. We're going to sing some more praise songs. And at the end of those three songs, then we'll go downstairs. Okay? Just watch for me and Natalie, and we'll walk down the center aisle, and you all can follow us. Okay? So let's go praise and worship. Come on. At this time, like she said, let's be in a posture of worship, if that's standing or sitting. Um, We're going to sing some praise songs. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So Justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So
You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You Oh, 
Children can go with Reverend Jean downstairs, and adults can sit down. And thank you, praise team. That was wonderful. We appreciate it. We have been in a sermon series this past couple of weeks that has been based on this book, Talking with God. And the past couple of weeks, um, the, uh, the, the parts that we looked at, I should have marked it better, um, the first one was the God we talk with. The second was the way we pray in the sense that prayers are short and simple and honest. The third, and it's this week, is how we pray when. <coughs> the video that you see, I hope, um, will give you an instance of times when we pray, when, when life circumstances kind of catch us by surprise. How many of you have skied, uh, downhill skill, skied in your life? I know probably many of you have also water skied, and the same principle there. Um, applies. But I uh, just wanted to share with you, I, um, I was born and raised in the flatlands of Maryland, and I had never skied in my life until my husband and I moved to Connecticut early um, in our marriage. And he skied, and I thought, well, you know, I should learn how to ski too. And so, so I, you know, I did all the right things down on the bunny slope. And then there came this day that I thought, you know, I can do it. I'm going up the, up the chairlift, and I'm going to the top of the hill. And I did, and I got off the chairlift without falling, which was a miracle unto itself. Um, and then I looked down the hill, and I went, oh, I've got to go down there. Do you see how steep, do you see all those bumps? Oh, 
how do you pray when you're scared to death? And I prayed, believe you me, I prayed, dear Lord, help me get to the bottom of this hill. And I am here to say that I am thankful that the Lord got me to the bottom of the hill. No broken bones, no lost lives. I'm here <laughs> to be with you today. <laughs> so it was the prayer was indeed answered. We, um, we have lots of circumstances in our lives when sudden prayers come on. Um, maybe we've just realized that we've locked our keys and our cell phone in the car. Maybe we've just um, gotten ready to, to pull it down into the next turn on our journey and we see blue lights in our rearview mirror. Maybe um, uh, we are hopelessly lost in the back roads of, of Arkansas and, and our GPS isn't working and we don't know where to go. Some of these things can be fearful at the time but funny later. Some of these things can be life-threatening. Our scripture today has to do with one of those life-threatening situations. The disciples have just spent the day with Jesus as Jesus was teaching the crowds about the kingdom of God. And then as they come toward the end of the day, everybody's tired, and, they, and Jesus says, well, let's go to the other side of the lake. We'll find some rest over there, away from the crowds. And during the trip in the boat across the Sea of Galilee, a terrible, terrible storm comes up. And these disciples have the opportunity to see Jesus in a totally different light. They had seen him as teacher, rabbi. They'd listened to him teach all day long. But this day, this circumstance, they see him in both a life-threatening and a life-changing way. And this day, this circumstance, they come to know God as they have never known God in the past. I'm reading from the message translation by Eugene Peterson, Matthew chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Hear now the word of the Lord. Late that day, he, Jesus, said to them, let's go across to the other side of the lake. They took him in the boat as he was, and other boats came along. A huge storm came up. Waves poured into the boat, threatening to sink it, and Jesus was in the stern, head on a pillow, sleeping. They roused him, saying, teacher, teacher, not son of God, teacher, is it nothing to you that you're going, that we're going down? Awake now, Jesus told the wind to pipe down and said to the sea, quiet, settle down. And the wind ran out of breath. The sea became smooth as glass. And Jesus turned to the disciples and he reprimanded them. Why are you such cowards? Don't you have any faith at all? Well, feeling reprimanded, they also were sitting, standing, kneeling, praying in absolute awe. They were staggered. They knew him as teacher. They watched this circumstance and they said, who is this anyway? The wind and the sea are at his beck and call. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The storm came up suddenly, something the disciples did not expect and could not control by their own efforts. And is that not like many of the storms in our lives? Unexpected, devastating, 
circumstances suddenly appearing, circumstances that change our day and may change our very lives in the wink of an eye. Maybe it's the sudden death of a loved one. Maybe it's the diagnosis of a serious illness that is life-threatening. Maybe it's a pink slip at work. Or a partner who leaves and tells us they went out. None of us, none of us, whether you're in this room or elsewhere, are immune from these kinds of life's storms. So what do we do? As people of faith, we turn to prayer. But how do we pray when life's unexpected storms happen? These can be our most earnest prayers. The ones where we don't even know what words to say and our prayers come as groans and sobs. And then when the answers don't come, sometimes we think that Jesus must be sleeping, that he must not hear, he must not be listening. But in the scripture, Jesus does not stay sleeping in the boat. Jesus gets up. He hears the cries of the disciples. Psalm 18, verse 6 says, In my distress, I cried out to the Lord. I called to my God for help, and God heard my voice from his temple. I called to him for help, and my call reached his ears. When we are terrified, when we are devastated, no matter where or what or when, we can always talk to our God. And our God listens. Jesus got up. He told the wind to pipe down and the sea to quiet, settle down. And then once that storm had passed, the disciples were no longer talking about the storm. They were talking about Jesus and what he had just done. Who is this anyway? Even the wind and the waves obey him. How do we pray when the storms of life wash over us? We pray earnestly to Jesus. We make Jesus our focus. We turn our eyes upon Jesus and look fully in his face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim as God's love flows over us. But then, what about the times when we are the ones who caused the storms? We've made bad choices, and now, as a result of those choices, we are stuck so deep that we have no idea how we will ever get out. We ignore all the warning signs. How bad can it be? It's okay. It's fun and games. And then suddenly we turn around and we're stuck. Maybe it's someone who's struggling with porn. Maybe it's a wife caught cheating on her partner. Maybe it's a husband with financial secrets. Maybe it's a 20-something young person who can't stop gambling. We thought we could handle it. We never imagined it would come to this point. How do we pray when we're in that kind of circumstance? We wonder if we've even lost our right to pray. After all, we are the ones who did this. It's our own fault. We have to work this one out on our own. It's our fault. But this is the very time that we must turn to Jesus. We must fall at his feet and realize that it's only God's grace that will release us from this mud and grant us the freedom to live life as God intended it to be lived. We pray, Father, 
I am so stuck. Can you help me? Please pull me out of this mess that I've gotten myself into. Give me a fresh start. Make me whole again. We need to know that God loves us. And no matter how badly we mess up, no matter what we do, nothing can change that love and God's willingness to give us new life. It's never too late to earnestly pray, Lord, help me. What about when deep down in our soul we are worn out? exhausted, depressed, discouraged? How do we pray when life in its constant march is overwhelming or leaves us empty inside? Psalm 42, there are lots of emotions in the Psalms. don't know if you ever thought about that very much or not, but they range from thanksgiving and joy and praise to really being down in the dumps, down in the pits. And Psalm 42 is a lament. And it starts off, again, this is, again, the message. What? No, oh, I don't have a CD. Why are you down in the dumps, my soul? Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God, and soon I'll be praising again. God puts a smile on my face. He is my God. When my soul is in the dumps, I rehearse everything I know of you. Chaos calls to chaos in the tune of white water rapids, breaking surf, thundering breakers, crash, and they crush me. And then God promises to love me all day, to sing songs all through the night, my life is God's prayer. Sometimes we're depressed, we're discouraged, we're exhausted, we're empty. And it's good to pray to God, to let God know that that is what's going on in our lives. But this can happen also, this feeling of emptiness, exhaustion, depression, can happen also when things seem to be going well. In his book, Adam Weber shares the common story of emptiness. I have everything, a nice house, a beautiful family, money, a good job, and yet it feels like something is missing. What's wrong with me? And then we realize that what we've been striving for doesn't deliver what it promised. It didn't give us peace or wholeness, or joy, or love, or life. It only gave us exhaustion, and disappointment, and discouragement. It didn't satisfy our souls like we expected it to. Now what do we do? We get so depressed that we think, well, I must try something else. I'll try alcohol. I'll go to the bars. I'll try drugs, because that might help. Or I'll try getting a new partner or a new job, but none of it works. The emptiness just seems to follow us wherever we go. This is a common problem in our society, in our pride. We try to do it all on our own. I know what I need to do to fix this. I'll do whatever. And we forget or we deny that we need God in our lives. We need God in our lives. There is a hole in our heart that remains empty until we fill it with our God. In that same psalm that I've just read part of, King David writes, As the deer longs for streams of water, so my soul thirsts for you, O God. My soul longs for God, the living God. So how do we pray when our souls are empty or discouraged or exhausted or overwhelmed? We slow down. We be still. We talk honestly 
with our God, and we start each day in conversation with our God, maybe in the quiet of the, of the day in prayer long before the craziness of the day begins. We spend time with God in peace and in the presence of that moment. We must stop trying to do it all by ourselves. We must take time to pray intentionally with the God who desires to give us life and to give it abundantly. Jesus said, come. Come to me, all you who are weary, and you will find rest for your souls. We'd like to show you a video this morning. Betty Cummings, some of you may know Betty. Hold off on just a second if you can. Some of you may know Betty, has been a caregiver for Earl for more than five years. I'd like her to share her story, and here it is.
I hope you were able to hear some of that. I know behind me I, there's a hum that made it very difficult, but, but let me share just a little of what Betty said. She's been caregiving. She and Earl have been married 10 years, and of those 10 years, she's been caregiving for him for over five because of various, um, first physical illness and then dementia. She prayed out, prayed to her God in her exhaustion, in her discouragement, and God supplied. God supplied through Village House. Um, Village House is here in Bella Vista. I'll say a little bit more about it as we, um, we do the offering. But Village House is an adult day center that provides care for folks who can't stay home alone. It gives respite care and a break for those who are caregivers. And we give God thanks for Village House. Betty said she prays anytime, anywhere, just walking down the sidewalk. She prayed for relief in the storm. And the Village House came forward. How do we pray when? We kneel at the feet of Jesus, our Savior. We let go of control. The control that we think we have or should have. And in letting go, we allow Jesus to reach out his hand and do what only Jesus can. Calm the storms. Wipe away our mistakes. Give us a new direction, a new understanding, a new life. All of this from a God who loves us and is with us in all circumstances. Please pray with me. Lord of wind and water, Lord of calmness and peace, be with us this day. Calm our fears as we face uncertain futures. Help us to relinquish control and to place our trust totally in you. Remind us to continue to faithfully work for good with gratitude for the many blessings you have poured upon us. When the waves and the torrents threaten us, let us again turn to you remembering your saving mercies and love. Give us courage to become disciples who can calm the seas of doubt and anger, bringing hope and peace not only to ourselves, but to others who need to know you. Lord, this morning we lift to you those with health concerns. J.R. Anderson, George Brannan, Dick Bacon, Phoebe Bader, Diane Verville, Charles Hill, Jean Swanson, and Keith Pruitt. Lord, we lift to you the victims of natural disasters worldwide, and especially this day, those whose lives have been devastated by the California fires. Lord, as we have brought before you these situations that require your help and healing mercies, Remind us again that you are with each and every person and situation, offering your love and your mercy. We thank you for the many ways in which you have healed us, for all the goodness you have poured on us. We offer these prayers of gratitude and love as we ask these things in Jesus' name and raise our voices together in the prayer which Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory, glory forever. Amen. In this coming week, 
We will gather with family and friends in times of thanksgiving for the many blessings in our lives, blessings that have touched us and blessings that have touched others. This morning, as we offer our tithes and offerings, our gifts to the Lord, we ask you to consider a second mile gift, a gift in addition to your regular gift, and that gift will go to benefit Village House. Village House has touched the lives of many in this community. There are many who are thankful that it exists. There are many in this church who are thankful that Village House exists. And there's one of our own. I can tell you firsthand experience. I have seen as many as five or six just from this church community being ministered to, being helped by Village House. It is a wonderful, wonderful place. As Betty Cummings said, it was a place of respite and made a difference in her life. Know that, roughly speaking, 50% of all caregivers die before the person they're caring for due to the stress, the emotional, physical, spiritual stress that comes from trying to go it alone as a caregiver. Village House is a matter of life and death. And unfortunately, Village House is in a very tough financial situation at the moment. United Way has cut their funding because they're concentrating on children rather than adults. It's a good thing, but it's not a good thing for Village House. And so they are trying to raise adequate funds for operating in 2019. I want to point out Sarah Scott, who's over here in the pink. She is the director of Village House, and I invite any of you who have questions to talk to her after worship and find out what goes on there. As the ushers or the hosts come forward to gather our offerings, please give generously, not only to the Lord in our typical need, but also give generously in the need of Village House.
This week, your invitation is to know God in a new and powerful and life-changing way. Know that you can pray to, to our God anytime, anywhere, and that your God hears you, our God loves us, and will help us through any of life's circumstances. Take that intentional time to pray to our God in the week ahead. like our God and no we're not in control even though we think we are let go of the wheel intentionally pray to that God who saves who listens regardless of the circumstances and gives a peace that passes all understanding go in that peace Thank you.